in this chapter, we're going to be talking about acids and bases. So the first thing we need to do is kind of remind you from the fall how we classify acids and bases as weak and strong. Okay, so we'll start with acids. Um, here's a picture of what happens when I have a strong acid. Okay, so something like, you know, HCl. Okay, in solution, you're going to see just the H pluses, okay, and the, the negative ions, and it's completely separated, okay, you won't see any of this, okay, we say it ionizes completely, so there's no HCl left, but there's a lot of H plus and Cl minus, whereas a weak acid, okay, for instance, if we say something like acetic acid, which I'm going to start abbreviating like this because I'm lazy, that's acetic acid, you'll notice there's not a lot of, there's a little bit of, of H pluses and, and acetates, but mostly it's acetic acid, okay? It only ionizes a little bit, all right? This is really just another picture of, kind of, it's a little bigger, so you can see um, HCl and acetic acid. And I want to note that even though we say that there's H plus in solution, there isn't really. It's not H plus, it's H3O plus. And that's called hydronium ion. And I'll show you where that comes from in a second. Okay? So really HCl um, forms not H plus and Cl minus, but hydronium ion and Cl minus. The H plus is a shortcut we use that it's probably time to stop doing. Okay, and you notice for the acetic acid, it's mostly molecules, all sort of together, and there's a few ions, okay, but mostly it stays together. So strong acids, just a reminder, the only way to remember your strong acids is just kind of go ahead and memorize them, okay? There's eight of them, and it's easier to memorize the eight strong acids than to memorize the, you know, 3,000 weak acids. So there's nothing you can really do except go ahead and, and re-memorize those, okay? So if we look at HCl, we've been writing it that it breaks up into H plus and Cl minus, and we say that it completely ionizes, okay? It's all H plus and Cl minus and no HCl. So this is all gone, and it's kind of all this. Okay, this is actually a shorthand notation that we're going to try to stop using for the most part. What really happens is the HCl collides with a water molecule, okay, and it makes H3O plus, okay, the acid gives an H plus to the base, in case you remember your Bronsted-Lowry, um, and makes Cl minus, okay, for instance, HBr collides with a water molecule to make hydronium ion and Br minus. Okay, and whatever the concentration of this is to start with, this is the concentration of these ions to end up with, and that's all gone. Okay. So how about weak acids? Well, it's all of the rest of the acids. So everything that starts with an H, an HF, and HNO2, and HClO, and HClO2. Okay, so it's kind of sort of like everything else. And what happens here is HF. Again, we've been doing the shorthand we did in the fall, and we wrote this. Okay, note the use of an equilibrium arrow. For strong acids, we draw a single arrow. For weak acids, we draw the equilibrium arrow, and it's mostly this and a little tiny bit of this, okay? But again, that's kind of a shorthand notation, which we probably should start getting rid of. So let's say, let's not do that anymore. Let's do it properly and say HF collides with a water molecule, okay? It makes hydronium ion and fluoride. Okay, um, and again, it's mostly this, and a little tiny bit of the, the products, all right? Um, the other category of weak acids we didn't learn in the fall because it's a little confusing. A lot of metal cations 
are weak acids. So all of the transition metals, and magnesium 2 plus and aluminum 3 plus, those are actually weakly acidic. Well, why in the heck are they weakly acidic? Well, because they exist as something called complex ions. Okay, you saw a complex ion in Le Chatelier's lab. Okay. Um, so what happens is, let's take aluminum for instance. Aluminum doesn't exist as Al3 plus in water. It exists as Al with six water molecules attached to it with a 3 plus charge. Okay. We can talk about um, complex ions some more. But what happens to so this? It collides with a water molecule. Okay, equilibrium arrow, and you think of it, it has six waters. Okay, one of those waters is going to give up an H plus and put it over there. So what we have now is we have Al, and we have five waters left. Okay, but one of the waters now is just OH. Okay, because so we took an H plus from here, so it goes from three plus to two plus and it gave the H plus to water so I make hydronium ion okay so this is why transition metals are acidic let's do one more okay like I said all transition metals so let's take copper okay copper 2 plus has four water molecules attached to it okay there's actually an easy trick to figure this out um, there's only two here to look at but if you notice the charge it has twice as many waters. So a 3 plus charge gets 6 waters, a 2 plus charge gets 4 waters. Okay, So it's going to react with water. And one of those 4 waters is going to give up a hydrogen ion. So it has 3 waters left intact. And then an OH, and it goes from 2 plus down to 1 plus, And that H plus goes over to hydronium ion. Okay, And since they produce H3O plus in solution, that's why they're acids, okay? These reactions that we've been, we've been drawing, these things when we react stuff with water, are called hydrolysis reactions. Okay, so all of the reactions I've written so far are called hydrolysis reactions. It's just reacting something with water. So strong bases, they're pretty easy, okay? 99% of the time it's just going to have OH- in it. Technically speaking, it can have O2- also although we don't worry about that too much, okay? So it breaks into Na plus and OH minus. And notice that we're using a single arrow again because strong bases ionize completely. Okay, and this is going to make two OH minus. Okay, so how about weak bases? So weak bases, if you remember from the fall, we learned um, that the anion of a weak acid is a weak base. So HF is a weak acid. So F minus is a weak base. And we can show it by drawing the hydrolysis reaction. So I react it with water. Note that I'm back to my equilibrium arrow because it's weak. Okay, and the water is going to give an H plus to the F minus now. So I make HF and OH minus. And remember, things are basic if they produce OH minus in solution. So this anion is weakly basic. Okay, HNO2, nitrous acid, is a weak acid, so NO2- minus is a weak base. So we draw the hydrolysis reaction, okay, and I get HNO2, and I get OH-, minus. okay. So last category, I don't know if you remember, this fall we learned about amines. Amines are things like NH3. Okay, so it's hydrolysis reaction. We're going to react it with water. Again, it's a weak base. We've got an equilibrium arrow. It's going to make NH4 plus and OH minus. Okay, so it's a base. A um, couple more amines just so you can see how they work. We did this in the fall, but that doesn't mean you remember it exactly. Okay, so here's my hydrolysis reaction. Okay, so you take the H plus and you add it and you add it to the end. So NH2 becomes NH3 plus, plus OH minus, okay? Here's another bigger amine, 
Remember, amines have nitrogen in them and like three things, three H's or a group and two H's or two groups and an H or just three groups. Okay, they don't really look like anything else we've learned, so they're pretty easy to find. Okay, so again, I write my amine and I'm going to add the H plus to the end of it. So NH becomes NH2 plus plus OH minus. Okay, so that's how we're going to classify strong acids and, and weak acids, strong bases and weak bases. And they act differently, so first we have to be able to identify them, and then in the next videos we'll talk about what that all means.